It may be going a little too far to say every man for himself in Minneapolis, but it's pretty much every man for himself in Minneapolis right now. This, of course, was the center, the epicenter of the George Floyd incident and the George Floyd um, uproar, upheaval. Uh, George Floyd riots uh, spread out from uh, Minneapolis. The Minneapolis uh, City Council has stripped the police of um, some money. They haven't defunded the police completely, but they've ripped out, well, just more recently, $8 million from the police department. They've done this before. They've certainly demoralized the police. They've made the police into the bad guys. And what's interesting is that the police have decided, okay, well, here's how we respond to that. First of all, a whole bunch of policemen have, have left, creating a massive shortage. About a quarter of the city's uniformed police officers have either retired or quit uh, since Floyd. And, um, and this has led to a huge spike in the crime rate. In fact, this year so far, more than 65 people murdered in Minneapolis. And that's, that's nearly double the number of the previous year. Violent crimes are up. The place is becoming, well, here's a guy from Minneapolis um, quoted in a Reuters article, and he calls it, quote, a gangster's paradise. Um, in fact, citizens in Minneapolis, are, some of them are taking to patrolling the streets themselves. Reuters interviews a guy named Marcus Smith. This was, by the way, a George Floyd protester, a guy who was, uh, uh, you know, against the police. And he goes, wow, I, I didn't really realize that what this would mean, but I don't see the police anywhere now. So this guy puts on a Kevlar vest. He spends his evenings on the street corner kind of looking for bad guys. And um, so the police have decided, basically, listen, if you're going to take every incident, particularly incident involving a black guy or a Latino guy, and it's going to be a racial incident, well, we're just going to be really careful about approaching those guys. Uh, we're going to be kind of slow to respond to calls to the police. We're going to kind of take it easy. Uh, and this is now the attitude in the, in the Minneapolis Police Department. So in a sense, the left is getting what it wants. It wants to immobilize the police force. And the police force realizes that when they are put under scrutiny like this, well, maybe they should be immobilized. We'll let the citizens fend for themselves. Here's a Brandy Earthman, um, resident of Minneapolis. Uh, and uh, just this past summer, um, bullets come flying through her window. Well, one of her kids gets shot in the arm. And she says, quote, they don't care anymore. They're just going to let everybody here kill themselves. So what's going on here is that is that the left's attempt to squeeze the police department has caused the police to take kind of a hands-off approach. Police officers have basically stopped making tra traffic stops. They don't, if they're, if they're scouting a neighborhood and they notice people are intoxicated, they're fighting, they're involved with drugs, the police just don't even approach them. Remember that very often uh, it's in approaching people in these situations that you begin to confiscate not just illegal drugs, but illegal firearms. Um, and a, uh, one of the Minneapolis police commanders who retired this year, this is a guy named Scott Gerlicker, he says, quote, he goes, nobody in the job or working on the job can blame officers for being less aggressive. They're taking a kind of, you may say, um, absentee approach. And so the consequence uh, is an emboldening of criminals. Uh, it is a lack of police presence on the street. It's lack of direct police involvement. Uh, it makes the citizens more vulnerable. And by the way, most of all, of course, um, the minority citizens who are the most vulnerable. Uh, in Minneapolis alone, if you look at the, um, at the killings that have occurred this year, you find that they are disproportionately black, disproportionately Latino, and not a single one caused by a policeman's bullet. So if you want to look at the police not as the solution, but as the problem, as a city, you're going to have a big problem.